Hey guys, welcome to Gadget First. Today we're looking at AMD's new technology, Mantle. Uh, it got introduced with Battlefield 4 um, a few days ago, but no one's really been able to use it till uh, just this morning because AMD had to release um, drivers to enable it in uh, Battlefield. Um, but now people have got their hands on it and it seems like a really interesting piece of technology. Um, it turned out that it's actually more useful for people with low end CPUs or lower end CPUs and um, slightly better GPUs rather than more balanced systems. It's like say you have an i7 and uh, AMD R7, you know, it's really not going to benefit you very much if at all because, you know, um, the whole idea behind it is to lower the CPU overheads. And obviously, if you've got a whacking great processor and a really low-end budget um, GPU, it's not really going to benefit you much because your CPU is probably getting all the power out of the GPU that it can already. However, if you have um, a more balanced system or a more GPU-heavy uh, favorable system, like say you've got an R9 GPU and an i3 processor, then you know this is really going to benefit you because it's going to take the pressure off of your CPU, allow it to get more data to the GPU and um, be more efficient in that way. So I've done two different benchmarks, uh, one with an i5-2500K paired with an HD7950 at stock settings and one it's the same system but uh, with the CPU at 4.5 gigahertz rather than 3.3. Um, so obviously uh, the uh, expected output is that the 4.5 GHz system is going to show less of a difference between DirectX 11 and Mantle because you know the CPU is already getting pretty much the maximum amount of um, data that it can to the GPU so it's not really going to be uh, groundbreaking performance differences but you know at stock settings there might be um, a healthy difference so at 3.3 GHz the 7950 was achieving 73.5 frames per second um, on DirectX 11 and on Mantle it was reaching 79.1 so you know it's quite a healthy uh, six, and a half, uh, six and a half frames per second boost which you know uh, if you imagine that on a lower end system six and a half frames per second could be the difference between uh, like stuttery pictures and uh, fluid motion um, at four and a half gigahertz you know the difference is much smaller. Um, we've got 77 frames per second, 77.7 uh, frames per second on DirectX and 79 again on uh, Mantle. Um, one thing to note is that um, you're pretty much getting the same results on Mantle at 3.3 gigahertz and 4.5 gigahertz which basically says to me that uh, we're basically um, at the maximum this GPU can do. It's not limited by the CPU anymore. It is just limited by the fact that you can't get any more performance out of this graphics card. Um, so there's not really much Mantle can do about that. But you know, if we took this uh, i5 CPU that I'm currently using and whacked uh, 290x on it, you know, you'd be seeing much, much greater um, performance increases with Mantle because the CPU using DirectX 11 does not have the horsepower to power the graphics card at its full potential, whereas um, with my HD7950, you know, the i5 can easily give it all it needs. Now, all these benchmarks were done in uh, the same single player uh, mode of Battlefield 4. Um, I tried to do the same thing every time to make it um, repeatable and reliable. Um, but one thing I found really interesting with Mantle is its multiplayer use because um, in single player, you know, the CPU is being used but not particularly heavily. Whereas uh, online, you know, the CPU is going to have to deal with the network. It's going to have to deal with a lot more stuff than on single player. So I tried that, and I wasn't able to uh, do any benchmarks because it wasn't really reliable enough. You have to quit out of the game and then go back in after changing between DirectX and Mantle. But um, the difference was much greater. I was going from maybe 55 frames per second on DirectX up to upwards of 75. Uh, FPS with Mantle, which is a huge, huge difference, um, and especially like I said with the uh, previous results, if you bring that down onto a smaller system, uh, less powerful system, you know you're going to see massive, massive increases in performance. So it's absolutely brilliant. Um, people have been disappointed with it. You know they're like, oh, I've got an i7 and it's not really benefiting me. Why I hate you, AMD. Ooh. 
but you know, get a grip. It's a free bit of software that's been made in less than a year, or just over a year, and it's taken DirectX and OpenGL like 20 years to get where they are now. So for Mantle to just start last year and you know get its way up to this performance is really really uh, admirable from AMD, and you know it's only going to get better. My 7950. Although it supports Mantle at the moment, it's not optimized yet, so there's going to be improvements to come on the uh, GCN architecture. Um, you know, and if you've got a 290 or a 290X or a 260X, I think you're going to see bigger uh, performance increases than this because those are like, properly optimized for uh, Mantle, whereas mine isn't. So you know, uh, if you're disappointed, then you know just use DirectX. There's nothing to uh, moan about. Uh, if you're on NVIDIA, well, you're out of luck really, there's nothing much you can really do about this. Uh, people have said that NVIDIA is going to have their own kind of uh, graphics API out. I can't really see that happening. Uh, you know, you've got OpenGL, you've got DirectX, you've got Mantle now. And Mantle has had such a hype about it, it's going to be hard for NVIDIA if they brought something out just to get the same amount of hype. So I can't really see NVIDIA doing that. Um, you know, it's going to spread APIs a bit thin. You know, if you've got millions of APIs, it's going to be you're going to lose a standard, and it's going to be a horrible, horrible uh, way to uh, for gamers. It's, it's going to turn out worse for the consumer. So, but that's it for now. That's uh, the performance overview of Mantle. There'll be more to come. I'll see if I can get hold of maybe a 290 or 290X to do some uh, testing on maybe a Crossfire system to 7950s. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned and thanks for watching.